Hey everybody, I'm just going to wait a second and then we will get started. Um, this is the 12th episode of Duke's Download. Today's episode is going to be um, slightly shorter than usual, but I am so excited to have Max Muchnick, the co-creator of Will and Grace, uh, on today's episode. I'm going to see if he is on yet. Let's see. He should be in a second. Um, Will and Grace has always been one of my favorite shows, so I'm thrilled that Max agreed to be on today. Let's give him a second. My mom and dad are on. But yeah, everybody, thank you so much for all the support so far. Um, it really means a lot to me. These, these episodes have been um, really uh, getting a good reception, so I'm grateful for all the support and the love. Let's see here. One moment. Yeah, uh, Max had a scheduling issue, so um, I don't think he's going to be able to give us as much time today as I usually do, but I'm happy to have um, even a few minutes with him. He's a pretty amazing guy. Hopefully he... he I told him how to, um, how to figure out how to, you know, connect. Oh, here he is. All right, hold on. I'm going to connect now. Come on, any second. Hey, Max. Yeah, I'm here. You, you, you <laughs> thought it wasn't going to happen. Well, I know it's like, you know, this technology stuff. So my mom says, hi, Max. Hi. In the comments. <laughs> Thank you, you know, so much can, for the time. Is Lisa really. Borgness still in your life? Say it one more time. Lisa Borgness is still she in your is. life. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, She's okay, uh, one of my great. mom's best friends. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was just going to mention how we met that I don't know if you actually remember that um, I came to the set. You probably of don't. Course. That I came of to... course I remember. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, oh, no, but, yes. No, but not the one a couple of years ago, but the fact that I came back in like 2001 when I was eight or nine years old with Lisa. Right. You Were you with her the when she played? Uh, were you with her when she was on the show or when? I think maybe she had just left. Me. Oh, no, yeah. maybe she did work there at the time. It was, but it was, yeah, it was like 2001. And I either you or maybe I think Sean or maybe the two of you gave me a tour of the set when I was a kid. Yeah, I um, think it, I, it, it was me. And you know what? You should ask you, the people that are watching, you know, don't say what she was if you haven't said it yet. But you should ask super fans, what did Lisa Borgness play on Will and Grace? Oh, wow. That's a good because question. Because do you know, I mean, or we... There are, maybe there, there are no more super fans left. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe we should just, we should just tell I'm them. I'm a super you, fan. Do I'm you know what she fan. was, though? Do you know who she, what, what she did no. on the show? No. She, she played, she was a significant character. Lisa was the girl that slept with um, Will when... Uh, no way. He was no longer talking to Grace, yeah. So, you know, oh she, was, she was, Lisa Borges was the, the, the main threat to... I did to not Will. know that. I didn't even yeah. know she was on the show. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, she was a, an extra, yeah. But little did I know. I mean, of course, I knew back then, even at that age, that it was a huge show. But I didn't know, of course, how much it would come to mean to me personally. And so when I got to come and see the uh, taping a couple years ago, and I sat right behind you and got to watch. Like, that was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. Honestly. Yeah, so. I, I'm, I'm glad it was. You know, it was and it, for me, too, uh, making the show and specifically the live, the, the nights that we shot and the, the studio audience being there, that I got to do that, you know, 230 something times was, I mean, it, it, it's like my husband always tells me I don't have to, uh, I don't have to keep trying, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, but, but I, I, uh, I loved that I got to do that, I have that experience, it was incredible. Yeah, and to think that you had it obviously for the first, uh, what, was it eight years? Yeah. Eight, seven years. Mm -hmm. And then to not, not knowing that 11 years later that you would then come back again. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask, ask you about that. I mean, I know that the 2016 election was when you guys did the, the special. What right. was there sort of, what was it? And like, I noticed that on this, the second incarnation of the show, there, there was a lot more sort of, um, you know, uh, direct sort of political acknowledgement of what was going on in the news and everything at the time. Um, was that something that was intentional for you? Like, that was, a, was that a reason why you came back to the show? Well, yeah. I mean, actually, all roads lead back to my, my uh, husband, uh, Eric Hyman. We were in London, and 
uh, things weren't going well for uh, um, Secretary Clinton, and I was um, uh, really frustrated about uh, the state of affairs in uh, you know, uh, the, the political scene in America. And I and I said to my husband in the back of a cab, "It's such a shame that I don't have the platform of the show anymore to talk about some of this, uh, you know, through parody." And, and because I feel like that that was always the best, you know, Trojan horse to kind of take take some of these opinions into the, um, you know, into the conversation. And he reminded me at that moment, uh, the set happened to be in transit on its way back to L.A., uh, where it had been at my it had been at, at, at Emerson and my alma mater. And he said, why don't you just grab the set before um, before. Um, it goes back to the the NBC archive and uh, um, say something like make make it make a uh, make a short um, call them and see if you can do it and 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 so I did and I thought th it was just it was all perfectly built the architecture of the show is exactly right Jack is the child that didn't know which way that he should vote and uh, Will and Grace clearly had an opinion about it and Karen of course had, Karen would be a Trump supporter right and so. Yeah, and 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 you know they were all they're all very politically minded and and um, so we went and we we did it and it's 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 interesting. I mean, I have on 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 the wall in my office a letter from um, Hillary Clinton and and it's about um, she had seen it and she was thanking us and she was talking about that the wind was finally at her back and then James Comey uh, got on TV the next day and things changed and and it, it, the the amazing thing about all of that is we i don't in the order of how it went i think we had already been asked to come back on the air um and we were in that process but we actually thought that we were going to do this again as as uh, uh, as a community of, of uh, artists that that uh, supported hillary clinton but in fact we were given this other thing and it gave us a lot to write about, but but um, yeah. because I think if it, anything, I think it made the show even more important and more. I, um, I mean, it, it's what what I mean. Thank God you guys were there, sort of to serve as a as a counterbalance to you know to what was going on in the. I mean, I know it was you know predominantly about the entertainment and the comedy and yeah. all that, but it was important. You know, I think you guys really did uh, provide an important voice. I mean, you always have. Initially, but you know, to your point about referencing entertainment, I mean that that's what we learned very quickly is is uh, I I I think now uh, then and now uh, people really needed a break and they did not want to deal with this and and we could have it as a backdrop and uh, it was fun that Karen supported him and uh, that was just an interesting way to get it at some of the 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 comedy, but but by the the time the first season was over, we realized we can't really talk about it too much because right. people just didn't want to. They didn't want to go there. They didn't right. want to go there every week, you know. Uh, you and people I wanted just, people wanted uh, you know a break too. But I mean, the show yeah. provided that too. I mean, plenty yeah. of like an escape from you know all the seriousness uh, because you know these days it's hard to escape from. The dark, right. the darkness, you know. Right. That's why. Uh, that's why I called you to tell you I didn't want to do this five minutes before <laughs> we're doing it. With all this, all the crap, I was going to say the s going yeah. on in the news, and it's you know, it's it's a, it's that you have to. It's like finding that sweet spot between, you know, uh, wanting to to do good and everything, but also, like that's why we rescheduled initially because yeah. you know there's so much stuff going on. So you have to be sensitive about. Uh, when it when it's appropriate and not to talk about certain things, you know. Yeah, but look, I I I I, uh, I wanted to I wanted to be a grown up and I wanted to show up and I wanted to show up for you, um, but I I just I'm feeling sensitive now, you know, um, all, you know, across the board, and I uh, and I feel like I'm, um, in many ways I, I should be listening, but 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 I also I think that there are things that I can and should be doing so. We're here and have at it. I don't want. To, I don't want to stop you from from you know talking about whatever you want to talk about with me. No, but so like um, alluding to what you were sort of saying before about the recent interview or recent uh, 
seasons, the reincarnation of the show. But uh, going back to the original show, um, when you were first developing it, I know you had done a lot of sort of mainstream work before, right, as a writer on the on the um, Wonder Years and other shows. Yeah. Um, so for you to then write a show and uh, create a show that was, you know, kind of risky, I mean, definitely risky at the time, um, considering the subject matter, was that a, like something that you were aware of? Were you afraid of it? Or did you, did you just say, I want to try and do this, regardless I, of the risks? I, I mean, historically, we, we've, we've talked about it so much. I really didn't want to. I didn't want to do it. I was um, uneasy about all of it. And, and it was my straight uh, writing partner who was the advocate that, um, uh, for me, as a gay man, that, that really made the, th made the thing happen. And, and um, I mean, it's analogous to, to what's going on right now, um, because, um, uh, you know, we all might be uh, fearful uh, about what we should and we should not be saying right now, but it really is, it's, um, it's our job to, to start building these bridges Mm -hmm. And and um, um, I didn't I didn't know I didn't know what to do back then. David Cohen uh, built the bridge, uh, you know, or helped start to build the bridge. And, you know, and I and I really think that that's that's what we should be doing. I mean, you know, all these white people who are uh, just saying I'm not racist is it's not really enough. It's that you we have to now be anti-racist. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. um, and we have to um, uh, show show that in action, and um, that's why I I really had some concern about having a public conversation with you, uh, because I feel like uh, it's it would be much better for me to just um, make some course corrections in my life and the way that I have done things and uh, um, um, and, sh and show that, show that in action. Um, uh, because that's always, that, that's how it, that's how it's gonna, that how, that's how it needs to be, you know? Well, I mean, I know you, I know you probably, you know, you hear it a lot, but I, and I know it's a slightly different issue, but I hope you know how much good you've done in people's lives and you'd like you you've, you've saved people's lives and i think you know i mean as joe biden said nothing has probably done more to promote equality among human beings and you know um and understanding and acceptance and celebration of diversity than you and by and will and grace i mean right honestly, so you've done but, a lot of good for the world and okay. right but but our 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 you know but 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 I'm going to try to navigate this really carefully, okay? Because I, I really just don't want to, I don't want to be making any mistakes. A lot of the politicians of that time and that era, okay, vis-a-vis -vis gay issues and, 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 and thank you, by the way. I, I really appreciate all the compliments about the show and what it's well, done. Well, I know and, from and, personal experience, because when I was 14 or 13, um, I was watching Will and Grace when we lived in France, you know, on TV late at night, you know, on the reruns and, yeah. you know, and so for me, um, yeah, I, it was life saving and life affirming for me on a personal level. So. It's, it's so sweet and it, it really touches me. And it's the thing I'm in this last go round that I allowed myself to truly get in touch with. I, I wanted nothing to do with that um, in the first run of the show yeah. because I just wanted to kind of keep my head down and, and uh, uh, make the show that we were making and not get, not really get outside the building and uh, get, get lost in, in, in any of that. But um, it, there, there, there's, a, there's a very interesting analogy that, that, I, I, that was very frustrating for me um, uh, throughout the years of making Will and Grace. Sorry, my friend's dog is barking. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, in, in making the, the, um, um, the show, I, I, I really did not like uh, when, when people came to me and talked about uh, po politicians, that they were evolving on the issue of, uh, of, of homosexuality and, and marriage um, and, and, you know, equal rights for gay people. And um, uh, um, Obama used that language. Hillary Clinton used that language. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Biden was the first one to kind of break through yep. and, and um, just, you know, kind of talk the talk. But, 
But I can't imagine what it's like. I mean, uh, when you relate it to the, the climate that we're in right now, that's why n none of our, our, our black, you know, brothers and sisters or any, any people of, of, uh, uh, of, of any race right now, they, they don't want to hear you say, I'm evolving on something. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it out. It's like, we'll do it, get, you know, get to it, get to it already. It was, I always found it, I always found it just so unbelievably insulting when these very, very important people would talk about they were evolving on gay issues. Yeah. And, and that's why with everything that's been going on right now in the world, uh, it's like, no, this, this, things have to happen now. We, we have to be making these changes right now, today. And, and uh, I don't blame anybody for being as angry as they are. I just, I just don't. I thought, and I think actually, it's even the evolving the phrase, the idea of evolving in the context of this issue as well. Uh, the gay marriage, I, I rewatched the interview you did. I think it was CBS Sunday morning or this morning where you were talking about the ev evolving thing with gay marriage. So true on this issue as well, um, you know, on the civil rights, on the you know, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. Oh, and all yeah. that. Very analogous in that sense. On a lighter mm -hmm. note, yeah. um, I was gonna ask you about, which I, because I, of course I watched every episode of both the old show as well as the new show or the latest version, but how did the I Love Lucy episode come about uh, at the, the other, I guess the second or third to last episode of the last season of Will and Grace? It, it's, it's something that we're, we, we were so proud of. Um, amazing. Bob Greenblatt, who is kind of like our guardian angel, and he 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 really he invited us back to NBC. He was the chairman of NBC at, at the time uh, the, when we came back in 2016, and and um, he um, was uh, uh, he sat down with us at at a lunch, and when he asked us to do the show again, he said, "I I, I have no um, parameters for you creatively." The only thing that I want to suggest to you is that you think about somehow weaving Will, uh, um, I Love Lucy into Will and Grace. And, you know, it took us three years to figure it out. But, but once we figured out the story that we wanted to tell, um, that was really the impetus was Bob asking us to do something with it. And then when we figured it out, we, I called him up and I said, can we have uh, uh, Lucy Arnaz's phone number? Because we want to call her, we have an idea. And, and it was all really based on um, Ricky being the true star of that show. And, and, and um, I knew that that was going to be something that she would love hearing because I'm, I'm sure Lucy Arnaz has lived a life of everyone telling her. But her mother about her mother and nobody's ever talking to her about her father. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so we, when we, when we, we got her on board with it and I asked her if she would do it, um, we really were, we were off to the races. And, and because this crew had been at it and been doing it for 20 years with us and they were, they're so, they were, they are the gold standard. That by the way, is the other thing. I can't handle my neck on this thing. I just cannot handle my neck on this program um or whatever you're looking, you're looking great okay thanks thanks i mean i don't have your goddamn lighting i mean i would i well, should have worked wedding because it's i should have worked that well a lot of people yeah. do sweat when they're around <laughs> me i understand that um but but uh uh our crew wait hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna try to give myself i'm gonna try to get some of the jewish gray out of my face um oh it's not working it's getting worse okay i'm just gonna stop and talk about the Will and Grace program. I think you really do look great, so don't worry. About Thanks, it. honey. So, uh, but because this crew is so great, and I and I also just kind of want to say that uh, um, that was the other magnificent part about doing this show again was was getting in touch with how brilliant we always talk about the four actors in front of the cameras being the lightning in the bottle, but 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 the Lucy episode tells you. Uh, as 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 much as any episode we ever did, the lightning in the bottle also was behind the camera, and uh, our crews went to work and rebuilt those uh, those uh, sets and um, every single thing that we could make authentic uh, and true to the original, we did, and it was just great. I mean, we used the same candy from C's. We, it was just it was absolutely amazing. So every every bit of it. I mean. Even I love that you brought uh, Leslie Jordan back in to do. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, and that character, like genius. Like I, 
of course he's going to play the Italian lady in the bat. I know. Of course. I know. It's so, I know. It was so good. Spot on. Yeah, Spot on. I know. So to, your, yeah, to your credit, couldn't have we been just, better. Thank you. We just couldn't keep Leslie's, uh, we couldn't keep Leslie's skirt up for that, for that dance, but we did the when best he, when, he, when he pulls it up in the front, that was like, for sure, oh, he could gosh. not get the tuck. He could not get, <laughs> the tuck is not in his oeuvre. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the other episode, which I loved, of course, I mean, um, you know, this, in particular was the um, episode, which I, I wonder, I was wondering how this came to be, the, where Karen sings The Man That Got Away. And of course, you know, I having the stars born connection. Yeah. I love that. How did that come uh, to happen? Or how did that idea? Well, come up? like, you know, again, like all roads lead back to Bob Greenblatt with the second round of, of, of Will and Grace programs, uh, you know, episodes. Bob, um, it was, he's a huge stars born freak and actually really got me into the the true stars born obsession mm -hmm. um uh that th i had not hit that i had not hit that uh you know road yet uh and and he took me to the hollywood bowl and we watched were you there for that where, no, where, I don't think where, I was. where they did where they did stars born live to I they should... the the symphony recorded it live how did i not and, know about this it was so incredible and and we watched this and i and i and that song, watching Judy Garland sing that song with your grandpa walking in, uh, you know, I yeah, just, I was so totally taken by that. And, you know, Megan Mullally is a, she's a powerhouse. She's just a powerhouse talent. And there are some, there's some confines to that, to the, that Karen character. You can't, you can't go places. And uh, I, 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 David and I are both, David Cohen and I are both huge fans of her voice and um, seeing her in concert, she's, she's, she's something special. And we, want, we figured, uh, once we could figure out a way to get her to sing, um, this was the song that we landed on. And it was also the song that she sang first in her kind of musical career and her musical journey. Wow. That was a song that she always sang at the very, very beginning when she was very, very young. I mean, I, I, that's one thing. I knew she was hysterical and great yeah. and all that. Never knew she was this incredible singer. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And the takes of that, like, are the outtakes of that are absolutely incredible. The, the way that we shot that was just, was, was amazing. And uh, um, she, she, yeah, I mean, well, and the, the, the uh, she, I, she, I don't know if she even knows this, but, but she actually sang it too slow. I actually liked, I like the tempo, uh, the the Judy tempo, Megan's tempo is it, it's it wasn't it didn't work for me. And in post, you know, the magic of post, we were able to speed it up, and um, and still achieve and not modulate her voice at all. But we right. could speed up the tempo, and we got it to to what it was in the show. Incredible! I'm glad that you liked that because it's 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 one that I really liked too. It was fantastic. Um, yeah. one, of many, one of many great moments. Um, right. But, uh, but no, and it's funny because when I, when I, of course, I was sad that the show was going off the air, but I was like, I assume Max is now going to take a long break. But then I see you're diving right back into another show. Oh, yes. This is just, I mean, <laughs> no, uh, no, there's no, there's no time. I can't if stop. If I were you, I, I, would, I would probably be like, I'm going to go off on a beach somewhere. And, you know, no, 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 no. I'll sleep when I'm old. I, I, I had to, I have to, uh, uh, I had to get right back to it. I, I, uh, and, and the opportunity of being able to work with Julie Bowen, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, raised by wolves, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, that that happened for us and, and that she decided that she, she wanted to work also after coming off of this very long run um, as something else. And, and um, the character that we've written for her is so very, very different than what she's been playing. And as I said to her the first time I met her, she's never going to be in yoga clothes or on a soccer field ever again, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the version of uh, uh, the, the person that I see her as, is Frankie Wolf. She's, it's gonna be a very, a much, much more glammed up version of her. And she's such a, she's absolutely so beautiful. And I cannot wait to put her in hot shit, incredible clothing. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but yeah. Uh, I don't think be... this is, uh, I don't okay. think FCC is regulating. Okay, yeah. Show. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be good. No, that's, that's incredible. So you're gonna go, I mean, well, I assume 
probably delayed slightly because the production part was. I, I'm 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 waiting. She's waiting. We're all waiting. You know the the uh, we had we thank God we cast her because I don't think that we would be around if we hadn't cast her. Uh, she's just too big of a star to kind of let go, and and so um, uh, we were actually in casting to because the other part in the show is her sister, and uh, that's when uh, the when we were sent home. And now we're we're waiting uh, to hear when can we go back and a sitcom of all of the forms of uh, of art that uh, you know that that are made on TV. I, we feel like we we can figure out and keep people safe, yep. um, but we just need NBC and CBS to get on board. Yeah, no, I know, and I know you you during uh, quarantine you've still done little projects here, and I love the ladies of Truesdale. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. About my little walking club. But it's like, hysterical. you know, and right when things were getting so hot with us and, you know, who knows what was going to happen, what kind of offers were going to come in. Um, we we uh, you know, the world decided to get very serious. And I, I get I, you know, and I, I, being as sensitive as I am, like in, in calling you today and thinking I, I really just shouldn't be doing any of this. Um, it was also um, uh, the legs were cut off of all the ladies of Truesdale because it just, I, I'm not going to be Instagramming, you know, silly uh, no, yeah. walks that I take with Matt Bomer. Um, but, but I, I'll tell you because it's, because it's never going to happen again. And the, and the show has been permanently canceled and shelved. Um, the, the, the funny thing about the ladies of Truesdale is there is a real ladies of Truesdale walking club and we <laughs> pass them we pass them. I'm not going to say the days that we walk, but but we walk at a certain time yeah. uh, uh, during the week, and we pass them every single day. And it is just so funny because I, I they don't know that I like I'm a little obsessed with them, and they're 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 quite a crew. You probably could write a great show about that about the right. ladies of Truesdale for real. But again, I don't know that the ladies of Truesdale is what the world needs to hear about right now. But but you know, but I think at some point, you know, it will it once will... Uh, racial equality is achieved. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, and like, what? Wait, what's the other cool, uh, insignificant thing that I'm up to? That I that I uh, oh, one other really cool, insignificant thing. Uh, that does it, that I that I won't be able to share with anybody, but I can do it right now because it's live and then it'll go away. It's, it's, I'm not. I'm, this isn't going to be breaking news. But I found um, with all the time that we're spending on the phone and all of the you know like just the trolling and the looking and the reading and right. Um, there's one thing that I've always wanted in my life, and that was a pair of ruby slip. You know, I've always wanted the ruby slippers, right? And I asked Debbie Reynolds, may she rest in peace, who owned, uh, I think she had, had a couple of pairs of them. Um, I asked her and her fantastic answer to me was, um, you and every other fag wants to buy those shoes off of me. Michael Jackson just asked me if he could buy them for me last week. And I love that that was her way of saying that Michael Jackson, this fag had just called her and asked her for these shoes. Um, but during this whole thing, uh, this quarantine, I found the one guy in the world that makes the perfect replica of the shoes, and I'm getting them tomorrow. Uh, a five and a half ruby slipper, um, made with the exact orange felt that was on the base of Judy's shoe, with the same tag inside the shoe, the wow. same bow, and um, maybe at another time I will. Uh, you can do a live do demonstration it. of. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. No, I mean I, it's a five and a half, and my foot's not going to go. I, 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 my huge, huge, you huge. Do a, you know, uh, like, presentation. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Yeah. But uh, for real, that's incredible. That's something. Yeah, really, I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> It'll be great. Well, I I hope you'll post a picture of them, maybe. Yeah, uh, I, pro on, I probably on, will. I probably will. Or text one to me. I'd, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd actually be interested. I mean, that's yeah, really yeah. Cool. But really um, but no, I really appreciate you taking the time. And thank um, you. We got I through it. You no, know, I mean, I know it is a sensitive time, but you know, I think you can you can be proud that you are someone who has actually done something meaningful to make the world a better place. Yeah, um, but not enough. That's the whole thing. I appreciate that and I take it and I honor it and I really I'm grateful for it. But it, it, it's like right right when you think you're done, the the universe shows you that no, we're actually nowhere near being done and and 
the yeah the evolving thing has always been an acceptable word but really maybe it's time that we just kind of get there you know I'm so, with you. I'm okay with you. Well, all the best to you and your family. You and too. Love, wait, man. can I, wait, I want to do one thing because no, can't no. I take a picture of us this way? Can I do that? I can, can't okay. I? Oh, right. I? Hold on. I'll wait, let's both picture. look and smile and we can do it. Ready? And, and let's do, let's bite the apple. Open the mouth like we look like we're laughing. See, there that's, gonna, go. that's gonna look like we were having so much fun. It was a, it was a great time. Thank okay. You. And talk to you soon, I hope. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye, buddy. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.